Good day, dear listener, and welcome aboard the Ozma. We have an exciting show planned for you. But before we get too far, a word to the wise. Though Project Ozma is considered to be a comedy, the humor involved is known to contain swearing, allusions to sexual themes, as well as themes of minor violence. A more in-depth description of this content as well as the transcript can be found in the description. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. Fighting God behind a 7-Eleven was not, as it turned out, any match for what was waiting for us behind that door. Nothing was. It was... <laughs> Shit, I don't even know what I'd been expecting, but it definitely wasn't what Quinn and I got. The quite frankly gigantic room we walked into wasn't quite as wide as the sanitation chamber had been, but it had the same vibe. Big time. Before I could comment on the uninspired interior design choices, though, I saw the windows. It takes a lot to shut me up. Quinn showing up to whisk me away on a grand space adventure had just about done the trick, but this... this was on another level. These windows... man, they were enormous and so clear that if you squinted, you could almost imagine they weren't there at all. And we were just standing at the edge of an endless expanse of space. And it was beautiful. I'm sure there are better ways to describe it, but right then, I couldn't tear my eyes away from the sight long enough to think of any. Honestly, if I'd been alone in that room, I'd probably still be standing there, gazing out into the void. Luckily, though, I wasn't, but it was close. Besides Quinn and I, there were only four other people here, and they were all standing in a small cluster at the other end of the vast hall clearly deep in conversation. Or, well, they had been back when we entered. While I was distracted, the smallest one had noticed us and broken off from the group. It's the people from Earth! Huh? You know, that strange planet in the northern galaxy? That's where you're from, right? What? I heard you guys have been in space for over 50 years but still haven't shown up to the Ozma before. Is that true? Why do you take so long? Weren't you excited to meet everybody? Why'd you take Yeehaw. so long to... Let the Earthlings breathe before you bombard them with questions. Uh, oh, sorry. I apologize for Nihawk's behavior. <laughs> he gets excited. How, Nick? That's okay. No worries. I was just caught off guard. I expected there to be... <clears throat> so, um, where are the others? <laughs> New leaders show up first to get acquainted with the Ozma. It says so on your invitation. Didn't you read it? So much for empty alien formalities. What was that? Nothing. In that case, it might be a good idea to get the introductions out of the way. After all, it's never too early to start forging alliances. Nihawk, why don't you go first? What? Oh yes, I'm Nihawk, ruler of the Skoax. And, uh, well, you've already met my guard, Tonic. Well met. Wait, you're the ruler? Aren't you a little young? Well, technically, yes. But it was thanks to my research that we managed to leave our home planet and discover life beyond the stars. So my parents figured I had proven myself enough to give up the throne early so I could attend this conference. They said it would be a good reward and learning experience. Oh, that's cool. Very. Queen Kamui, Himio, come over and introduce yourselves. I am Kamui, Queen of Palakai, and this is my guard, Himio. Pleasure to meet you. 
Well, I'm Persephone, but most people call me Percy, and this is Quinn. We're both from Earth. I'm also Queen Persephone's guard. Yeah, right. Silly me. I'm new to the position. You know how it is, right, Nihawk? Oh, did your parents want you to get the experience, too? Something like that. Does anyone know when the other rulers are supposed to get here? Mm -hmm. Probably sometime tomorrow, but I'm not sure when. Maybe you could check your invitation? Oh, right. Let's see, it's, uh, tomorrow morning. You know, I accidentally left my invitation on my pop. Is there anything else on it that I should know? Uh, remember? Aside from the itinerary, your personal code, probably. My what now? Uh, your code. You know, the one you use if you ever need any of the bots for anything. The one that lets you access their commands. Oh, right. That code completely slipped my memory. Guess we won't be using any bots then, eh, Quinn? I beg your pardon? Nothing. Say, anyone know where that AI ran off to? Did you need something, Persephone? It's just Percy. And I'm alright. Fantastic. Well, it looks like just the six of you are doing just fine here, so I'll be- Wait, hold on. Don't we get some kind of, uh, tour or something? Yes, but- New rulers are usually left to converse with each other a little longer before- I think we're good, right, Nihawk? Absolutely! I can't wait to see the rest of this place. All right, then. If you would all follow me. We are currently at the center of the Ozma. But, as you notice, this main passage begins to break off ahead. It would take a standard lifetime to explore every room and hallway aboard this station, so this tour will only cover the key parts. Here, for example, this is our onboard library. Many rulers like to bring their favorite texts from back home and upload them onto the Ozma's database, where it can be translated and made available for the enjoyment of any passenger. You are all encouraged to contribute to this practice next time you find yourselves aboard the Ozma. Is the library open now? Of course, you can access it at any time. But it would be in your best interest to allow me to finish this tour before going exploring. Oh, okay. Then we continue. To your left, you will see the ballroom. As you have probably noticed in your itineraries, there are a few events that will be hosted in here. Hey, Quinn, doesn't that weird thing in the corner look kind of like a piano? If a piano had scales, sure. It does. Not literal ones. Now shut up and pay attention. I wonder what it sounds like. Very elegant, I assure you. Oh, I... Do you play? Percy. Unfortunately, my programming doesn't account for that kind of knowledge. Along this corridor in front of you are the bot's charging stations. You are welcome to come find me or any other serving bot down here at any time. Straight ahead is the dining hall. Some meals will be open to all rulers and their guards, while others will be solely for those new to the Ozma, such as yourselves. Be sure to check your itinerary for more information on that. I think we're gonna have to live on a prayer when it comes to that. I'm ignoring you. And finally, your sleeping quarters are down this hall. New rulers have theirs to the right. You'll find them to be fairly standard and plain, I'm afraid, but depending of your success here aboard the Ozma, you will be permitted to design these quarters to be more suitable to your individual tastes. After all, if your plan is deemed fit to continue under your individual rule, you will be invited back for future conventions. Now, I will leave you to freely explore the Ozma, though if you would prefer to contact home, holocoms have been provided in all of your rooms for your convenience. How will we know which room is ours? Your planet's name is written on the door. If there are no further questions, I will leave you. Dinner will be served in two standard hours, so please come down to the dining room then. Well, you heard them, and... I, for one, am exhausted. What do you say, Quinn? Wanna go check out our room? So many rooms. Just how big is this thing? Well, here are our quarters. Come on, Himio. Oh, goodbye. See you at... dinner. Well, they're friendly. Don't worry about them. They seem to prefer each other's company. Yeah, I can see that. And oh, would you look at that? Here's our room. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay. Come on, Tonic. Let's go find her. Subtle, Purse. Real subtle. Oh, shut up. It's not like you were any help out there. 
I thought you were doing just fine. Don't patronize me, Quinn. I'm serious. I mean, no one expected us to just blend in seamlessly up here. Believe me when I say we expected it to go a lot worse. Gee, thanks for that. I feel much better now. Do you really think we pulled it off? Yeah, they probably just think we're two eccentrics with zero social skills. So just the truth, then. Pretty much. <sighs> anyway, I should call Reed and let him know we made it here, okay? Can't believe it. Here we are, having a moment. And you ruin everything by bringing up that asshole. That asshole's vital to our mission, Purse. <sighs> yeah, so I've heard. Hey, what's that you got there? The holocom thing AI was talking about. I'm guessing it stands for holographic communicator, so I might be able to send out a solid plan. To... Quick question, though. Do you have any fucking idea how that thing works? I'm sure I'll figure it out. Uh-huh. How hard can it be? Famous last words, Quinny. Listen, if you'd just be quiet and let me work, then... Told you so. All right, then, Persephone. What do you suggest we do? Well, first off, I'd suggest you stand back and let me do my thing. Why am I not surprised that your thing involved violence? Okay, first off, that's- Need some help? Ah! Nihak! How'd you get in here? I heard a noise and figured you might be in need of some assistance. That's nice of you, but I think we're good here, so if you could just- Actually, we do need a hand. We don't really have any holocoms at home, so we're a bit lost. Oh, that's no problem. My family doesn't use holocoms either, but we use a similar kind of communication. Who are you trying to call? Oh, it's, uh, um, it's our Percy. Uh, why don't you tell him? Oh, am I allowed to talk now? It's a friend from Earth. We just like to, you know, tell him we're okay. Because he's probably worried out of his mind, seeing as we had a pretty good chance of death and that's bad. I mean, no more than the rest of you. It's just space can be dangerous and all, so he must be worried. Or, no, not that worried. That doesn't seem reasonable given the circumstances of- uh, Just the name is enough. I- Oh. Charles Reed. That should send you through. If you need help with anything else- We'll let you know. Thank you. <sighs> what the hell were you on about just now? What was I on about? I was saving your ass, which you're welcome for, by the way. And here's an idea. Next time you're trying to lie to someone, at least try to, you know. Start babbling and almost giving away our entire plan. Hello? Hello, Reed. Good evening, Quinn. Persephone. Hmm, great to see you too, tight ass. I appreciate your call, Quinn. I was just about to message you. How's it going up there? Good. We were just given a tour of the station by the Ozma's head robot, AI. And now we have some downtime before dinner. This place, Reed, you have no idea- I'm sure I don't. Before we get into that, however, I must ask that Persephone leave the room. Excuse me? The discussions between Quinn and I are confidential and not of any importance to you. Is that so? Well, I don't know if you've gotten the memo, pal, but I'm sort of pretending to be the Queen of Earth here. So I think that whatever the two of you are going to be talking about would be pretty fucking important to me. What I think Percy's trying to say is that it would probably be better for all of us if she had all the facts, which doesn't seem unreasonable. Be that as it may, this is still a confidential meeting. I understand that you haven't been a part of the PRET program for very long, but I should hope that you understand the importance of what we do here. And while you may trust Persephone all you like, the fact remains that she hasn't even received a fraction of your training. So, in words you can understand, scoot! <laughs> okay, listen here, you pompous- You should go, Purse. Quinn. I'm sorry. But we'll talk later, okay? Fine. Whatever. You two can have your top secret scheming club. I'll just wander the Ozma and, you know, maybe start an intergalactic war. Or two. Later, Quinny. The hallway outside our room was empty, which was probably the luckiest thing that had happened to me all day. Most of what I'd said back there had been to piss Reed off, but there was no telling what sort of trouble I could have caused if I'd bumped into Nihawk or Komoi or any of the others right then. But I'd have to deal with them sooner or later. I'd have to talk all of this out with Quinn. Hell, I'd probably even be forced to apologize to Reed for my reckless behavior. Because 
This wasn't like cracking wise in my statistics class, or insulting some jerk on the bus. This was real. I was here, in space, on a mission that would decide the fate of my entire planet. Every choice I made, everything I said mattered. And that was terrifying. Especially while I was standing there after having stormed out of my own room like a goddamn teenager and realizing that maybe I wouldn't be able to... <sighs> no. <laughs> no. I couldn't go down that road. Not after Quinn had showed up on my doorstep after five years of radio silence. Not after we'd survived a trip to a fucking space station or almost freezing to death in a sadistic sanitation station. I wasn't going to lose my nerve now. I wasn't going to let her down like that. But I still couldn't shake the feeling that maybe, just maybe, she'd been wrong to pick me. And if that turned out to be the case, our entire planet would have to pay for it. Project Ozma is a Goose Thunder Network produced podcast. Today's episode, Day One, was written by Molly Ray and Ilva and edited by Megan with sound editing by Sunny. Music was composed and performed by Benny James. The voices you heard in today's episode in order of appearance were Allison as Percy, Owen as Nihok, Greg Froze as Taunik, Ari as Kamui, Alan Winter as Hemio, Petra as Quinn, Benny James as AI, and Cedric Reeve as Charles Reed. Want to continue to stay up to date on all things Ozma? Follow us on Tumblr at Project Ozma, on Instagram at Project Ozma Podcast, or on Twitter at Project Ozma.